Today, I'm at Emirates First Class Lounge in Dubai, and I'm very excited to share with you this video. In June of this year, Emirates finally resumed flying their Airbus A380 double-decker super jumbo jets to the United States. For me, it's been more than 16 months since I've gotten to enjoy this experience, and today, I'm going to share it with you. I just fueled up on a light breakfast in the lounge, so now I'm ready to go. Let's see what the Emirates A380 has to offer. Hello, YouTube travelers, and welcome to the Gentlemen of Fortune channel. Join me on my travels around the world, and together we'll review the latest in flight and lounge offerings, find out how various airlines' first and business class products stack up, sample their catering, and indulge in their finest champagnes. Together, we'll experience the best of the best, and maybe some more obscure ones too. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. And now I invite you to sit back and relax as we get this next adventure underway. First and business class passengers who will be traveling on the upper deck of the A380 can board through a dedicated gate on the lounge level. Once on the jet bridge, we have a less obstructed view of the A380s. This one, parked next to us, features the Expo 2020 logo. And here's a look at the aircraft that will be taking us to New York with registration A6EVE. Once on board, the purser escorted me to my suite in the forward portion of the upper deck. Here's a quick look around the suite as it appeared when I arrived at it. There's a very large TV screen as well as tons of amenities and special touches. For example, this drawer contains a handy notebook and a nice pen. The design aesthetic of the suite heavily features burled wood and gold trim which contrasts against the bone colored background. Protruding from behind the seat, you have mattress pads, pillows, and blankets, which hint at one of the minor shortfalls of the suite, which is a dearth of storage. To provide a greater sense of space, there's no overhead storage in first class. From your seat, this is the view you can enjoy. And within easy reach, you have your own personal mini bar, which is a fun little feature. On the side console, a removable personal tablet allows you to control the in-flight entertainment system as well as many of the other features of the suite. And down below you have controls for the window shades as well as lighting and call buttons. The window features both a sheer shade as well as a more opaque one. Even when the shades are open, the way the windows are designed on the upper deck of the A380, you have a somewhat limited view angle. Aft of the IFE tablet, there's a small storage locker. On one armrest you have the seat controls, which include takeoff and landing, sleeping and eating, as well as controls for the doors. There's also small storage for something about the size of a pen. In the opposite armrest you have a handheld controller for the IFE. Up at the front of the suite there's an electrical outlet as well as a USB plug. The tray table is very large and continues the theme of the burled wood and the gold trim. As the boarding activities continue, a traditional welcome of Arabic coffee and dates are offered. The safety video is screened in both English and Arabic on the large TV, and as we push back and prepare for departure, I enjoy the views of the large 380 aircraft. After a few minutes of fumbling with the IFE system, I'm able to get one of the three exterior cameras to display on my personal monitor. I'm impressed by the clarity of the picture, and it's a great way to watch the takeoff. If you're not that interested in takeoff views, you can jump ahead to the 4 minute 55 second mark. Masalama Dubai.
Emirates provides Bowers and Wilkins noise-canceling headphones to their first-class passengers. I found them to be very comfortable, and they provided good sound quality. Just before we began taxiing, one of the flight attendants presented me with this Emirates branded tote bag. It seems like it's decent quality, and you could maybe use it for a beach bag or something, but mostly they just seem to accumulate in my closet. Inside of it, it had the pouch for the sleep set, a pair of slippers, which I neglected to show, and the men's Bulgari amenity kit. Being first class, the amenity kit is pretty impressive, so let's take a look at all the things that are inside of it. To start off, we've got a travel size can of shaving foam. There's also a can of spray deodorant. Of course, there's a dental kit as well. We have a small package of tissues. There's a folding hairbrush and comb combo. And there's a bag within a bag. Inside this smaller bag, we have the Bulgari branded cleansing towel. There's a bottle of Bulgari's Tiger Cologne. A bottle of Bulgari branded Hydrating Body Emulsion. A bottle of Aftershave Balm. And finally for this little baggie, a tube of Bulgari Lip Balm. Back in the main bag, we also have a razor. And lastly, some promotional material for Bulgari. So overall, I think you walk away with a very nice amenity kit. Here's an overview look at all the items that come in the men's kit. Now inside of that felt pouch that we saw earlier, there's a pair of pajamas. The pajamas are treated with something that's supposed to help keep you hydrated. Now here's a look at a pair of the slippers which they provide. Now on to something more exciting. Here's a look at the snack basket that's waiting for you at the seat when you arrive. It's got a bag of mixed fruit and nuts, some potato chips, my personal favorite, the lacrids. some hydration tablets, a container full of breath mints, and finally a nice little chocolate bar. 
Now they'll take the snack basket away for taxi and takeoff, but don't worry, they'll bring it back shortly after you get airborne. In my case, I was pretty tired, so as soon as they were able to, I had them convert the seat into the bed. Here's a look around the suite so you can see what it's like with the bed made. Here you can see the privacy that's provided with the doors closed. It's actually a little bit better than is conveyed in this clip because of the angle of the louvers, but it's certainly not quite as nice as the new suites. After a couple hours of sleep, I was eager to get up and try some of the food offerings. Given that this was Emirates first class, I was definitely not going to be wanting for food and beverage choices. Naturally, I started with some of the Dom Perignon champagne. And of course, there's plenty of other great options for the enophile. Mmm, 40-year-old port. I didn't mention it before, but in case it wasn't obvious, Emirates offers a dine-on-demand concept in first class. Here we'll flip through the pages of their comprehensive cocktail and food menu. I tried to display the pages with enough time so that you can read them, but there's so much to see. If you need more time, don't be afraid to pause the video. Now, where were we? Did somebody mention Dom? To complement the champagne, I'm offered a trio of canapes, which you'll see at the top of my plate here with the caviar service. They consist of, from right to left, blue cheese with apricot chutney on gingerbread, a venison skewer with cranberries, and smoked Scottish salmon. As for the caviar service, I was impressed to see that this time they actually included a spoon made of mother of pearl. This is the first time that I've seen this on Emirates. The caviar is served with an assortment of garnishes. I'm quite fond of Emirates' presentation and actually prefer it over that which you'll find on many other carriers. With this service, they didn't proactively offer me a shot of vodka, so I opted to save some room for the onboard bar. Now here's a closer look at the trio of canopies, all of which were tasty, though the venison was too dry. Now that we've had a nap and a little snack, let's take a look around this A380 aircraft. At the front of the first class cabin, you have this grand staircase, which seems like it's never used. This leads up to a self-serve station where there's fruit, snacks, and sandwiches available, but conspicuously absent is the premium self-pour liquor and soft drinks that are normally there. While this display is decidedly less impressive, there's probably soft drinks left in your minibar, and everything is just a flight attendant call button ring away. Or better yet, we can head to the back section of the upper deck to the truly spectacular onboard bar. This bar is accessible to both business class and first class passengers, but first class passengers get the premium liquors that are available in the menu. Here's my take on James Bond with a martini. The incredible Emirates flight attendants make sure that everyone's drink is full and that they're having a great time. Because business class passengers don't enjoy the dine-on-demand service, the bar area tends to clear out considerably during their scheduled meal services. Even if one were to cocktail right through the meal service, there's plenty of nibblies, both hot and cold, available to make sure that nobody goes hungry either. New cocktail and mocktail selections are rotated through the menu frequently. Here I try the Floral Fizz Mocktail on its first day, which has a delicious rose flavor. And if you're looking for something a little higher octane, you can dig back into those first class premium liquors. Sadly, on this flight they didn't offer the Imperial. With several libations under my belt, I thought I'd better head back and enjoy some dinner. As I worked up quite a thirst traveling from the aft section of the aircraft back to my seat in first class, they cracked open this lovely bottle of 2005 Clos de Marquis that I enjoyed with my beef tenderloin. Steak was perfectly acceptable, though the presentation seemed a bit bland.
I capped off the meal with this chocolate fondant while I enjoyed one of the latest Bollywood hits from the movie selection. When the movie concluded, I figured that that would be a good time to get some more sleep. I took a quick peek out the window to enjoy some of the incredible views over Greenland with its flowing glaciers before drifting off to sleep. I slumbered peacefully for several hours before being woken up by the flight attendant at the scheduled time for my shower spa before landing. Emirates must have the most impressive lavatories of any airline with two shower suites at the front of the aircraft. There's more than enough room to move around while making yourself presentable and even heated floors so that when you step out of the shower you won't be cold. This impressive mural details some of Dubai's most iconic landmarks. Naturally, there's a full range of toiletries available for your shower session. There's even a TV in the lavatory so you can keep track of where you are while you're attending to business. The shower cabin itself is of good height and offers plenty of space to move around inside. There's even a seating bench, though you probably won't be spending that much time in this shower. The water quantity is metered, so you only receive about five minutes of water with a warning about a minute and a half before the end. I'm lovely and clean for now, but I fear it'll only last for an hour or so, because when we land in JFK I'll have to battle my way through to make it to my domestic connection. Once again, this was another excellent Emirates flight, which I almost felt like ended too soon. It's always enjoyable to be able to shower on board, so that you don't feel like a sweaty mess when you're deplaning after 15 hours, but on this flight, my most memorable experience was spending time at the bar with my new cocktail slinging friend from Poland. The hard and soft products are always very good on Emirates, but the shower spa and onboard bar really elevate the experience on the A380. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that before long you'll get to experience the joy of flying on an Emirates A380. In the interim, please like and subscribe, and as always, until the next video, safe travels.